Hi everybody, it's me Ryan and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to make your own custom Windows 7 Start Orb. Now the reason why I'm making this is because if you guys remember back in Windows XP, which is uh, that's the operating system I started learning because uh, I was too young to learn 95. Whenever I got XP, I started getting interested in computers and how they work and all that kind of stuff. And so, but I've always noticed in XP, there's very, very limited customization in terms of, instead of, you know, just your wallpaper and screensaver, your taskbar and your start button. You couldn't customize that except for the couple pre-made things they had, like they had a silver one, and they had Windows Classic, which that one had little goofy colors. I think, I think you could customize those colors, I can't remember. It's been a long time since I had to use XP. And then, so I've always wanted to kind of customize that kind of stuff, but when Windows 7 came around, excuse me, it allowed us to do that. So I customized my taskbar to the color of my liking, and um, but I've always wanted to change the start orb to do it something custom that sets my operating system uh, style, you know, in its own part. All right. So uh, that's what we're going to show you to do today. So what you're going to need, you're just going to need one program, which the link is in the description down below. And as you guys know, as always, any software that I show you guys or have you guys download is always free, no matter what. Okay, once you have that, you're also going to need a photo editing program such as Photoshop or GIMP. I'm pretty sure GIMP can do this. I've never used it, but um, people like to use GIMP as a Photoshop alternative. So all we need is uh, the ability to have a couple different um, blending options for your layers and plus also the ability to make a mask. Very easy. So what we're going to do is first we're going to open the program before we get into Photoshop. And here it is. It's very, very simple. Um, what you want to do is go down here, bottom right, there's going to be a little arrow. You're going to click that, and this is the advanced options here. Um, you just want to check in these two boxes here, add shortcut and context menu, and add option and context menu. And you can also show this, but uh, you don't have to. Okay, so what that does is if you make, let's say you make a couple orbs and you want to test them out, so instead of having to come in here and change it, you can just right click on it, and it'll say set as start orb right here. It has to be a bitmap, though. Can't save it as a JPEG or anything else. It has to be a bitmap, which is something I learned. Um, and then if you don't like, you know, if you messed up if, or if you don't like what you made, you can always click restore and it'll set it back to its original um, style, which is down there right, right now. Okay, so as you see here, it's all lined up. We are going to have to make three different orbs. One for default when it's idle, one for when you hover over it, and one for when you press it. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, you don't have to add these, you know, fancy uh, glowing kind of effects. You can do your own thing. And uh, I'm just going to show you a basic kind of button. I'm not the best, you know, Photoshop kind of person. But if you if you know what you're doing in Photoshop, you definitely uh, make some really neat buttons. So uh, also you can go in here and click change as well. It will open up by default to the directory for your start orb. And I drag it out onto my desktop because we are going to use it as a template. So just do that, just drag it to your desktop, and you'll see C orb. All right, so we're going to exit out of here because we don't need it for right now. And let's get into Photoshop. So here it is. I have a blank uh, project here. I don't have anything loaded. So what you're going to need to do is, I'm going to kind of drag this over, take your C orb file and just drag it into Photoshop. And now we have this. This is going to be our template. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go down to Zoom, and we're going to fit it to the screen so we can see it a little bit better and we're going to get started. So we're going to make a new layer. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just kind of try to match up with the circle, just cover over this as the best we can, and then I'll show you uh, a little couple little things I know how to make a button, but um, nothing fancy like I said. So you're going to go down to the left hand side and get your ellipse tool. If there's something else here, just hold, like left click and just hold, and you'll see your different tools. You're going to need an ellipse tool. And you're going to hold shift and then click uh, somewhere in the orb and then drag out. This this just makes a perfect circle every time. Uh, right here, then let go. And this is supposed to be white, so go to the top and just make it white. And then you're going to hit control T. If you guys already know, it's free transform. We can then move it around and resize it if we need to. I'm pretty good, actually. I did it the almost perfect last time. So maybe we could just maybe just make this just a little bit bigger. Maybe just a little tiny bit. That that's almost spot on. It doesn't have to be perfect because as you 
I can see down here it's not going to be like real big so you're not going to notice like if there's just a little uh, it's not the correct size but you won't be able to see any of this and we're just going to take that out we're just using this as a template right now all right so what you're going to do now is then you're going to pick pick a color that you want to make your orb um, you can do I don't recommend well if your taskbar is like black I don't recommend putting black because you won't be able to see it too. you'll still be able to see it pretty well but uh, it's not gonna look as good as it can you could do like a grayish let's do yeah let's do gray we'll see how that works and you see here we can't do anything we have to rasterize the layer first that's completely fine don't worry about it and we're gonna color our um, circle here gray all right, next we're going to make another layer, and then we're going to, excuse me, get our ellipse tool once again. And then we're going to want to make this white. All right. And then we're going to draw out another circle. And what we're going to do is we're not going to make this as big as our other one. Maybe about here. And what we want is just line it up at the bottom, kind of like how I have it here. So if you kind of if you can imagine like if you tilt your head to the right you can kind of see like a, a moon looking kind of shape with this gray so we kind of have that kind of shape going on it's kind of hard to explain um, and then you want to go over to your layer properties blending properties over here um, and just click on overlay and then what we're going to do now is then go to filter blur Gaussian blur and then hit OK. And depending on how big your button is, um, like how big you made the circle, depends on, uh, is all going to factor in on your blur. So you can, we see we have it here 250 pixels, you can't see it. 0 0.1 is of course the original shape we started with, so just kind of do it how you want to. Um, I got Okay, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm actually going to shrink this down just a little bit because the blur amount that I want is just a little bit too much. Um, it kind of fills up the entire uh, circle. So we're going to try that again. That's that's better. About right here. I mean, you can just mess around with it. Mine's at 5.1 pixels if you make a smaller circle, uh, if you want to know. Okay, so next, uh, we're almost finished. We have to do one more thing. We have to make another layer and grab our ellipse tool once again. And uh, this time, we're not going to hold down shift. We're just going to drag across our ellipse tool, just make a little circle here at the top. Then you're going to hold down control and then click on your little gray part uh, of this box here. And this is going to make a uh, vector mask. So what we can do is if we just deselect this, we still have this mask. And then what you can do is go into your gradient tool, which is where the paint bucket is, and then make sure your color's white and click on this second one here, second gradient. And then, oh, we got to make a new layer first. And then you're going to hold down Shift and click from the top top of your selection to your to the bottom. So we have uh, this. Then to deselect it, oh, yes, I think it's Control D maybe. Yeah, Control D deselect it, or you can just click on the selection tool and click out of the box. Okay, so we're almost finished with this button. I know this tutorial is a little bit longer, but um, you know, if you follow along with these steps, um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to like not make it too long, but also explain everything. And then if you find problems with your button, you can also hit Control T and free transform. You can size it up how you want to. Um, but anyway, so now we have this little piece right up here with our gradient. And you're going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur again. And we're going to blur this. We're not going to blur it as much as our other one. We're just going to maybe like that, like 0 0.7 pixels. Very, very little blur. Just kind of give it the... Like if you shine like a light on it, you know, kind of looks like that. I don't, it's really hard to explain as well. So we have that. So it looks a, like pretty, pretty decent. I, I think anyway. Um, maybe this could have been a little bit not, not blurred as much. I mean, but um, it's up to you. Do it how you want to. And then what we're gonna do next is it. We're done with the button. You can feel free to add anything else you want. Um, you can add text. You could. Um, add in like if you get like a picture you can get a picture but then you have to take out the background like masking the background out um, so you're just left with just a picture and then like white box around it or whatever you could drag it into here and do it like that or you can do whatever you want I'm just gonna add in some simple text so make another layer in my text tool and we're gonna make this text black this time on the lighter colors like the red blue 
you can make your text white. I mean, you could do it black, but white, white, excuse me, I believe looks a little bit better. So we're just going to make a little box here. It's 53, just for my username. And hit enter. So that's our text. And then we could adjust it how we want. I'm just going to quickly, uh, maybe what in the world, try to tilt it. There we go. Alright, that, that looks good. So that's pretty cool looking. So what you can do now is instead of having to do all these steps I just showed you the entire way, what you can do is actually put everything, all your layers you have so far into a group. So get on here to this little folder icon and click it. So this is group one, then you're going to drag all of your layers into group one. Alright, very easy. This will just save us a lot of time um, and save you time as well. This will make it, you'll have, you'll be, you can duplicate this group, so if we shrink this down, we should have just a background lift, which we can turn off, but I'll show you what we need to do after we're done. But what we can do now is right click on our group, duplicate it, and just, we can call it group two. Alright, and then you can, with this group, whole group selected, hit control T and drag it down. You'll have everything you just did uh, on our first button, and we just duplicated it. Then you can do subtle changes, maybe put a glow or something on the um, on our text, which is, I think, what I'm going to do. So we're going to go to Group 2, grab our text, double-click on it, and we're going to do Outer uh, outer Glow, and we're going to make it uh, some kind of color. Maybe like a green. I think we need to adjust yeah, our spread just a little. Okay. If you're going to do this, keep your size small-ish in your spread. Uh, you can build it up. So we can't see that too, too well. Mm. See, because if you put the size up too much, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go crazy. Actually, I think I'm going to leave it like this. I kind of like that, actually. Maybe... That looks good. Cool. And then you can change your text color, whatever you need to do. So we're done with that one, and then what we're going to do, I'm just going to duplicate our first one, our plain button, duplicate that again instead of having to get rid of the glow. And um, if you hold down shift, you can drag in a straight line, so you don't have to hold down your keys on your keyboard. And hit enter to place it down. And then for this one, this is going to be the one where if we click on it, something's gonna, you know, this will change to whatever we have here. Uh... So let's change, can we, okay, we'll do a shadow, but we, but we don't want it to drop down too much. Um, no. Hmm. Let's get rid of this. Okay. I want to put a glow on this. And we're going to make this red ish okay this is probably isn't the most entertaining part of the tutorial I might even just speed this up um, but whatever make, oops make sure that's deselected alright so now that we're finished we are, need to do one more thing we need to add in the black background you see here with our original windows start or uh, background which we need to add in a black background so we're going to uncheck um, the eye on this one to make it invisible so we can't see it anymore. Add a new layer, drag it below our other layers, and then just get our paint bucket, and bam. So we're done. All we have to do now is save it. Make sure you save it as a bitmap. So go down here, and it's going to be BMP, and you need to name it something other than C Orb. Uh, so we're just going to call it Orb2, because I'm the second one. And keep the file format as Windows and the depth as 32-bit. And hit OK. So now we're going to go back. So we have our Orb right here. Um, what we're going to do now is relaunch our Orb Changer. Now, if you have a vast antivirus, or I don't know if this might do this with other antiviruses, when I went to change it, it thought it was a suspicious program and messed it up and it didn't change it even though the program said it was it did if that happens to you uh, and you try to relaunch a program it'll say it's already running so what you have to do is 
Control Alt Delete. Go to your task manager, and it'll be in a process. It will be called uh, Windows 7 Start Orb. Just click it and process and relaunch it. Anyway, go to Change. If, if you don't have to do this, uh, go to Change, and then go to wherever you saved your orb, orbs to, and double click, and it'll do its thing. And there we go. We are good to go. And you see, we have our new orb here down at the very bottom. And see, we're successful. And then if we go to, if we hover over it, it kind of turns like a greenish. And if we press it, you can see the red. It's it's not as much as, as we had it. It's like a, a very subtle. Um, you can mess around with it. Um, like, I, like if we go back, see how the red is? It doesn't look like what we had here. It was a lot darker. But, um, but you just have to do a little fine-tuning. Um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, it's actually, I'm, I'm going to keep that because I really like that. So I hope you guys enjoy making this your own start orbs. If you guys have any questions, anything I didn't touch on, please let me know, and I'll be glad to help you guys. All right, I'll see you guys in the, in the next video, and see you later.